shut up and sit down. Welcome to the Health and Wealth Podcast with your hosts, Tim and Carter. What's trending in Richards? Carter Wilcoxon, founder of CSI Financial Group here with my co-host and former wealth advisor, Tim James, founder of chemicalfreebody.com and your new health advisor. This is the show where we reveal the connection between physical and financial abundance. Hey, welcome back in Richards, Carter Wilcox, and coming to you from, um, we were actually just talking about it post or pre-show, uh, warm, sunny Phoenix, Arizona. It's about 110, 111 out here right now, but but don't feel sorry for me because I do live in Phoenix on purpose, so it's okay. Um, I, as always, I am joined by my fantastic, esteemed co-host and colleague, uh, Mr. Chemical Free Body himself, Tim James. Tim, how are you, my man? Dude, I'm doing awesome today. <clears throat> doing pretty good. Um, yeah. I did I did throw my back out a little bit lifting heavy stuff, but it's feeling better. I was able to get out of bed and get moving again. So back to yoga, back to life. It happens <laughs> to everybody. Yeah, and, and I know you've got – how are things going with your uh, mom and dad's um, build out? Uh, well, right now we're just um, building forms to pour the concrete for the – for a shop and then there'll be a recording studio put in that with a little living area deal. So that's the first step. And then the, we're going to do the house remodel on the garage edition next year, just too far behind with pro other projects and stuff to do both this year. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Well, um, Hey, and Richards, you are in for a treat. We are super excited about our guest today uh, coming in from central California, where apparently it's a little warm there as well. It is summertime, I guess. So I guess that happens. Uh, Erica Ramos of um, uh, Stream Tax Free. Um, am I saying that right? Is that, is that the, the proper name of your company? Uh, yes, Stream Strategies is the company, but Stream you've Strat already sent them to the website. StreamTaxFree.com is the website. Okay, and we'll make sure that the, that's in, in there, but uh, from... Um, stream there's obviously a theme there with you and and stream tax free and uh stream strategies obviously so erica thank you so much for joining us on uh on our podcast today well thank you for having me pleasure to be here with you both like-minded individuals mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well thank you very much and i know we're going to get into that um you know it's sort of maybe your previous history and and how you got into the financial services and everything but as is tradition here uh, what we'd like to do is I want to take the enrichers back to what was it originally for Erica Ramos that brought you into <laughs> the financial services business? You know, most people don't, you know, we're not going to school and thinking, oh, I'm going to be a financial advisor one of these days. Right. So so what was it? You know, what was your early influences? What was part of your journey that actually initially brought you into this field? Well, that's a that's a great question. I know we always joke no one ever grows up saying I'm going to be an insurance agent or a financial advisor, but it is a great uh, career and industry to be in. So it's actually family that got me into the industry. Uh, my sister-in-law was first in the insurance business, and I had the pleasure of working for her company when I was in college and uh, organically ended up um, going to work for she and, and her partner for their uh, employee benefits organization. So that's where my start in the financial services industry was, was with insurance and uh, had the pleasure of doing that for many years. We worked with employers. Um, you know, we helped them with creating really great and creative benefit packages to retain employees, help, you know, uh, happy employees or great employees and healthy ones are as well. So to um, you know, Tim's industry along the lines of bringing in wellness programs and so forth. Um, but I just uh, personally felt a desire to, to um, you know, kind of do something on a more personalized one-on-one -on -one basis as opposed to, you know, just serving big, big groups of um, employees. So it really, it was around the time of COVID when the world changed for all of us. Um, and uh, it, something just kept coming to me that there's got to be a better way. This, this, sh everyone shouldn't have to feel so out of control right now. Um, you know, we weren't even in control of being able to get milk or bread or toilet paper, right? Guys, it was, it was so crazy. And I remember my husband and I 
having a meeting with the kids, which you might see on my website, as we were saying, I have, we have a pretty big family. Um, and remember picking up my cell phone and looking at our 401k right around the same time and seeing like it had declined significantly. I thought, this is ridiculous. I don't know how to get milk on the shelves, but I know that I can help people protect their money. Um, and with my background in insurance, I thought, right, if I, I know enough about the products available on the market and some really amazing strategies that can help people not lose money. So that's just where I shifted my career and focus solely on helping people to take back control so that no one ever has to have that feeling of, of losing control again. Yes. Yeah, so um, so your your sister-in-law is who uh, originally was in that field and everything. Now, growing up, like maybe, you know, high school, college or whatever the case may be, did you ever have like a um, propensity for like like numbers and, or did you always feel like you were more of a, an, a relationship sort of a, of an individual, you know? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. No, I've always surrounded myself with very large groups of friends. So I value relationships a lot. Um, but I actually have always had interest in in money and finances. So I, I made it a goal of mine to be the treasurer of about just about every single club there was in high school. And I carried that into some club, clubs in college. So uh, social relationships and money, I think those are all really important pillars to have. So I've, and it's kind of stayed true through my entire time from high school till now. Well, so, um, so uh, your, your husband, Danny, you, the two of you have four kids. Um, now, did you guys meet in high school, college, um, and then, and then uh, uh, was it in California originally? Uh, yes, we did not end up, uh, you know, getting together and deciding to be a couple till after high school. We were a few years apart, but we have the pleasure of being from the same town. So it's really cool. Uh, our, our parents know one another. We have a lot of common friends and, it, uh, you know, great community around us to raise our, our family. So, yeah, we didn't know it was going to happen that way, but it did. Nice. So then. So like you're a sophomore and he's a senior kind of, that's the age difference. Is that what you're saying? Precisely. Or? Yeah. Okay. All right. So you guys, <laughs> uh, so you guys met. So, uh, you know, we were just doing a podcast yesterday and when we talk a lot, um, not necessarily because by design, obviously, you know, it's a very male oriented, uh, industry, right? There's, and, and I believe that there's a great opportunity for the female advisory uh, mm -hmm. space to be uh, filled in helping out these households that you probably deal with on a regular basis. But I was just wondering, you know, you said you made that switch and that transition. What was it like? Did you, did you go to Danny and did you say, Hey, I'm thinking about changing or whatever. And what type of, uh, you know, feedback and or support or conversations, what was that like whenever that started happening? Um, well, I will say, you know, we always look on the bright side of things. I think that was the bright side of uh, COVID and kind of things shutting down and pausing for a little bit. It allowed it a, some, a time for time out and reflection on just kind of a, a new game plan moving forward. So uh, I've got four children who are growing quickly and have been uh, hitting it hard, having the pleasure of learning and working for other people. And so I just wanted to essentially start my own practice to have some more presence in, in their lives and still continue to make a positive impact on, on lives of others. So, yeah, he was uh, super supportive of that. Yeah, well, I talk all the time, you know, on this show, I talk about my wife and how, you know, I wouldn't be where I'm at today without the type of support that she gives me on um, on, on believing in, you know, the vision, if you will. And uh, so I, I was just wondering, you know, from the opposite perspective, here you are, you're, um, I, I'm assuming in your, you know, mid thirties, late thirties, uh, early forties, maybe I, yeah, I, I, no, I'm 40 currently. Okay. 40. <laughs> way, way to start low. Good, good points there. Your well, I, I, you know, I am married, uh, happy <laughs> wife, happy life. I have learned that for sure. Um, but it is so critically important to be supported by the family um, whenever you're doing something like that. So I was just wondering again, you know, what was the, um, you know, for, was there anxiety from your perspective 
going to go say, hey, you know what? I know I was doing this, but this is really what I want to do. Um, sure. Yeah, there was a little bit, but there was also just kind of a unique drive from within that, uh, you know, kind of took over. I don't know if that's that wisdom that comes about as we hit this uh half time of our careers, but it it just kind of propelled me to know it was the right thing to do. And uh, so it was a, you know, all signs point this way kind of thing. And Nice. Awesome. Yeah. So then um, were your parents influential at all whenever, um, you know, you started going down the path or, or did they have totally different types of careers? Uh, so yeah, that's a great question. My dad's a pharmacist and, uh, he's been on the entrepreneurial side. He had his own, uh, drug store and then also went to work for some of the major corporations out there, you know, running, running their show for them. Um, and, uh, my mom was an entrepreneur, had her own, she's more on the fashion side. She had clothing stores and, and gift shops and so forth. So, I've always, again, had that experience of being around an office environment and, and helping to, to manage money and play with money behind the cash register and so forth. But understanding those business principles and the, the work ethic and the hard work it takes. Um, you know, there's also some lessons, right? We learn from our parents that they teach us that, you know, they know what they know is best. But is that always the right way moving forward? And one of those examples is I remember my dad always saying, Make sure you contribute to your 401k, right? Make sure you go to work for a good company that has a good 401k with a match and, you know, put as much money as you can into that. And that was great advice. But as we get more into the financial segment of this, that's one of the things that I think so many Americans have gotten into this like blind partnership, you know, with the government by participating in their 401ks. It, it seems like the right thing to do. It's what we know. And probably like Danny and I, you guys might have had the same advice from, from your parents, perhaps, to put as much money in there as you could. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. And, and I know in the, in the next segment, uh, and I know we're, I can see we're coming up on a, on a break here in, in momentarily, but um, we'll definitely get into more about, you know, how your practice works and everything. But um so, so your mom and dad still married and living in Central California as well? Yes. Yes. I am drawing a blank on how many um, years of marriage. Sorry, mom and dad, but uh, it's it's well over 50 now. Wow. And uh, so they're here and my husband's parents just celebrated their 49th anniversary. So it's, uh, yeah, a lucky, lucky place to be. Yeah. So, you know, um, that's, I think that's the, the last two podcasts um, was uh, from advisors who had a very stable family environment growing up and everything. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I, you know, I think it can be one of two things is, you know, coming into the financial advisory space, you really had that nice, you know, structure and everything. And you're like, this is something that I, I'm going to, and then you just become structured because that was, you didn't know any different. Right. And then you become a financial advisor. And you're like structure is important. And we need to make sure that we follow these certain rules that are, you know, the journey to success. But it sounds like to me, you learned some things along the way that maybe your parents didn't really know or weren't afforded that type of information. And I can see the book behind your desk there, the power mm -hmm. of zero. Uh, mm -hmm. So that, that, that tells me a, a lot and we'll definitely get into that. But, but having that, uh, that support, that and that and that familiarity of successful parents that obviously helped drive you to become a successful parent yourself. It sounds like. Uh, sure. Yeah. Of course, they provided a good role model, a great foundation, and I think you know, as with what any parent wants to provide their family, uh, is safety, security, that sense that that everything's going to be okay, even when times get hard as they do in every family, whether that's from external or internal <laughs> things going on. But uh, it's definitely, um, yeah, a pillar of what leads me down my journey and, you know, health, safety, security. Those are those are the three pillars that really fuel me to want to what I want to bring to my family from that. Uh, like you said, that model that I've had and I want to help others have that same peace of mind in their lives too because it it's a big deal that's awesome uh, i well i mean you know 
Kursk. We celebrated uh, 19 years, me and my wife, um, mm -hmm. just last month. And uh, it's been incredible. You know, we've got two, you know, youngish kids. Um, and it, it's it's one of those same exact things. And, and and that's the normal theme on this show. A lot of the guests that come on here, you know, they, you know, family oriented, you know, solid base and they, and they really, and that trickles into the type of service that they want to provide for their clients. So my guess is that's probably uh, fairly in tune with the exact way that you, uh, you, you model yourself in your own practice, which of course we'll get more in depth here in a minute. Uh, yes, definitely. So, and you have Danny and I beat by one year. We'll be celebrating 18 years in, in September. So uh, our, our children might be right around the same age too there, but uh, yeah, definitely it's, uh, and, the, and there's a lot of people out there that, you know, maybe have a different family dynamic or have had different dynamics growing up. And um, so definitely even on a, when we come across others in our life that, you know, can benefit from us sharing from them, you know, what it's always wonderful to share your wisdom with others. If you can save people time and fast track them, you know, just on the things that happen in life, right? You know, what you what you learn at your first, second, third job or in college or high school, if you could do it over again, what you would have done different. So we love um, helping to mentor others, you know, other young men and women that come across our, our family because, uh, yeah, we don't know it all. But heck, if we can help someone, uh, prevent someone from making some of the mistakes we did, then that's always a great thing. Yeah, you're bringing back apprenticeship, basically. There you go. Yeah, we need a, we need more of that. We need more of that where you just go learn skills and do skill transfer from people that are successful in whatever profession, whether it be a relationship or a family or a blacksmith or whatever. I mean, apprenticeship's mm -hmm. the way to go. So great yeah. first segment, guys. We're going to take a quick break. When we get back, we'll get into what Eric is doing to help her clients keep their money safe and secure and growing. We'll be right back. Estate planning. What does that even mean? When the inevitable happens for everyone on this planet, your estate plan kicks into action. But first, let's start with what an estate is. An estate is simply everything you own. Now, here's the issue and what needs to be understood when this event occurs. You only have two choices on this plan. Number one, either you plan how your estate gets handed out and distributed to those you leave behind. Or number two, your state decides who gets everything you own. For the first time ever, you can now take complete and total control of this plan that you've been deprived of for most of your life and generations before you. You can get personalized assistance along the way with a team of specialists whose job it is to make sure you have true peace of mind. It's important to understand that estate planning is a journey and rest assured that our team will be available to you all along the way and at every step. Welcome to eState Plan, home of the last estate plan you'll ever need. To learn more, make sure to reach out to your local advisor licensed with us or go to our website for more information. What's up, Enrichers? Tim James here. I'm back with my co-host, Carter Wilcoxon. Today in the house, we've got Erica Ramos from California, and she's doing tax-free retirement. Hey, Erica, I got a question for you. I remember back when I was a financial advisor, there was this book by this guy named Patrick Kelly. Do you know the book I'm talking about? Yes. Yes, I What's do. What's the title of that book? Uh, tax-free retirement. Strategies. I used to have it on my shelf here. Yeah, tax-free <laughs> retirement. I was looking back there in the book. I was, where's it at? And I remember I, I started getting blown away because I was also a licensed insurance agent besides having my, you know, being a stockbroker and all that. But um, I thought it was really cool. I was like, wow, indexed universal life. And I can, you know, I can become my own bank and I can teach other people to become their own bank. And, you know, I, I make a I make some upside when the market goes up, but when the market goes down, I don't lose anything. And then I can pull that out as a loan. And it, it's a loan, so it's not taxable. And then when I die, if there's any death benefit, then it goes tax-free income to my spouse or family members. And I thought that was a really cool concept. Are you using any of that uh, um, those strategies in your practice? Yeah, I think I'll just use that segment moving forward. You packaged it all well there, and I think it was one minute. <laughs> <laughs> But um, I actually just gave the tax free retirement book. I loved it because it had the, the new version has a little beach chair on it. it. Looks really cute in my setup here. But I just gave it actually to a client because there's some great content in there. Oh yeah, 
I think I bought like 200 of them for my clients. And um, we actually met Patrick Kelly. He was at one of our uh, one of our advisor events and he was speaking there and got to hang out with him a little bit. It's cool, dude. Cool, dude. Good yeah. presentation. Made sense. And, you know, it's just one more arrow in the quiver to help people, you know, with their full financial picture, you know, because if mm -hmm. as we were talking about this yesterday, like when you're a captive agent, you kind of have this little toolbox that the company gives you and you're kind of you're kind of stuck with that. You know, even though you might learn about something, you're like, oh, maybe I should go over there and that would be better for you. But I can't offer it to you because it's not here. I actually remember that was yeah. the same thing in the mortgage industry. I was like I was working as a mortgage um, loan officer. This was way back in the day when we're almost crazy again, but interest rates had dropped to like 7% and everybody was refinancing like crazy. Right. And, um, I, I was just, I had this one client. He's like, Tim, I, I really like you, but I can get the same loan 30 year fixed at 6.875 right down the road. And, and I went into the manager and I'm like, look, I've worked my butt off on this loan. This guy's got 800 credit scores. It's a slam dunk. Isn't there something you could do? And he's like, Oh yeah, we'll make it work. Go ahead. And he, he signed off on it and went, I was like, wait a minute. Cause they told us the rate sheets, the rate sheet, don't question it and stuff like that. So then this guy come from Wells Fargo comes in, he was a wholesaler and I was said, and we got talking and he's like, Oh yeah. He goes, don't tell him I told you this, but they have padded that rate sheet, dude. And I was like, really? So, and, and, and mm -hmm. I said, can you get me a copy of it? And he did. And it was like, I could have sold him like 6.625. Hmm. Right. And that's when the light bulb went off. I was like kind of a captive agent in the Morgan industry. And that's that's why I went independent after that. And then I went independent when I went into financial services. because I learned that lesson. You really need to have a big toolbox to be able to be free to help people with whatever tools are out there, not be stuck with, um, you know, a little small toolbox. And it's just um, people don't know. They don't know. So has that been your experience? Is that why you are? Are you independent? Yes, definitely. And I think sometimes that's an initial hurdle, you know, in someone's mind, right? If you're affiliated with one of the big names that has a big building, uh, you know, in, in some of these major metropolitan areas, that that's the better place to be. But just for the reasons you just said, quite frankly, it's not, right? And that's how it was in the health insurance brokerage space. We want to be able to be nimble and have the best fit for our Client. So I love being in that uh, agent, broker, advisor, consultant role, um, you know, so you can, you know, lean into partnerships and pair up with the best in the industry, right? You know, the three of us could team up and do something together and create more of like that family office environment versus just having these silo off the rack, off the shelf rates and be that's all you can do. Right. So I, yeah. I think that people don't want to go to big ass buildings anyway. I mean, older folks, they don't want to go up the elevators. It scares the crap out of them anyway. And who do you think, how do you think they can afford those big buildings? They're yep. using your money. <laughs> that's how they're doing it. So anyway, right. go ahead, Carter. I know you got 500 questions. No, no, no. I, 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 um, I think that's <laughs> awesome. Actually. It's a great segue, but it, it reminds us, we were just talking yesterday. There was a, um, Again, the theme is most advisors that come on the show, almost without exception, they're independent, entrepreneurial minded, right? They may start out as sort of like that captive thing. And yesterday uh, when we were recording the podcast, the guy started at Northwestern Mutual, right? And and that's kind of sort of the, the mindset and the, the prospective clients or the current clients that you work with, they get inundated with those commercials and they start believing, you know, that brand. Which is why, to your point, Erica, that has been a struggle and a hurdle for a lot of the advisors that we've worked with, that we help them, you know, look bigger and, and grow bigger because right, wrong or indifferent with all the marketing and branding of these big shops and these big organizations like a Northwestern Mutual, people have, you know, they, they buy that brand name. But mm -hmm. The downside to that is that you don't have the independence like you have. They're starting your own practice, you know, with stream strategies to be able to actually go out and find all the different things that could actually be impactful and helpful for the households that you work with. Um, so I would venture a guess that once you overcome the fact that you're, you know, this small organization, quote unquote, right, that they really love that personal touch that, that you probably give them. Yeah, I, I, as you might have seen in um, some of my literature or bio, I do lead with, uh, oh, looks like we're frozen here. Yeah, we're you're, back. you're still good. Okay. We can hear you. Uh, 
I really, you know, I, everything's about trust, right? So it's, you know, I take the approach as a trust-based financial consultant. You need to feel that you can trust me and, and I them, that they're being honest with me because we can't really get to that point of a solution unless we have that two-way trust. And so that's where um, I think we can set ourselves apart or where I have is really um, as a female in the industry too, which is a little bit unique. We are definitely more of the minority in the, in the financial industry. So I enjoy uh, making that connection, listening, and coming up with custom solutions. It's not a one size fits all that needs to fit into a solution off of a box or just sign up and then come over and we'll we'll figure it all out then. Uh, it's really, you know, having transparency and, and dialogue and and trust, I think is the foundation of it all to, that makes the difference. Doesn't matter how big or small you are, that has to be there. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it, the reality of the situation and and, and here's the thing. If you're listening to this right now, you want to find someone. You want to find an advisor who you know and you like and you trust. That that's that is that's a foundational thing that it will never go out of style. But you also want to find someone who's independent like you are, Erica, that has the ability to be flexible and nimble and find the actual solutions that you're not dictated to do. Right. So your job as an independent, you know, advisor, insurance advisor, financial advisor, um, your job is to find the, the, the most optimal ways to enhance your clientele's practice. Um, mm -hmm. So it's, um, you, you know, and, and of course, you do that with a lot of the different types of solutions that a lot of people, if you want to, you know, share a little bit about maybe some of the things you've had to overcome um with the fact that it's life insurance and, and some of your clients may be like, well, life insurance, that's, that's not good for anything. W what have you done in your practice and your ideal clients that help them to overcome the hesitancy that I know a lot of my financial advisors have had to overcome your, themselves when it comes to life insurance? And maybe, you know, that might be something that's different with me, Carter, is coming to the table with the background insur and insurance. People have bought insurance for years. They've spent money insuring against things that may never happen. Um, I'm not in the property and casualty lines, but I think the odds of someone ever using their homeowner's insurance is like one in 1,500. But when it comes down to someone using their life insurance, that's pretty inevitable. We just don't want to know when the time's going to be. So as I was sorting through what is the, what are the solutions I'm going to bring to the table, and I did want to bring some more uh, specialized, um, you know, strategies and solutions to my clients that sometimes financial advisors might just glaze over because they are complicated. There's a lot of work to them, but they have some of the most, you know, advantages and greatest benefits. So that I think. Thomas Jefferson quote, right? The only things guaranteed in life, death and taxes. Yep. So I thought, okay, well, if I can sell an insurance product that can protect someone's life from death and taxes, who doesn't need it? The only two things guaranteed in life. So forget having homeowners and car insurance, health, dental, vision. You need to have it all, right? We need it to just operate. Some of it's legally required. But the likelihood that you're going to use any of those products, I know that now, someone right one of those two ways are going to benefit from it if they pass away too soon or live too long and if they don't get to enjoy it their family will receive that tax-free wealth so that's been kind of my premise coming into the industry is embracing the concept of insurance this is the time you can actually buy it for something that's going to be put to good use nice awesome well well let's talk a little bit about um you know your clientele obviously you're so three plus years uh, starting this new practice. Is that right? Yes, but I've been selling life insurance for 20 and oh. uh, been, been a part of uh, retirement planning presentations alongside of 401k advisors. The whole time we, I worked in the employee and in, employer industry, bringing solutions to employees. Um, yeah. And some of these strategies we introduced into our own portfolio, financial portfolio about eight years ago. So, uh, yeah, I've been I've been in the game for for a while. That's now just rather than being the general practitioner, yeah. I want to become like the brain surgeon and how we can help people take that control using these strategies. 
That's awesome. So, so you're, you've literally bought into the whole concept yourself. Not only are you, you know, preach mm -hmm. the benefits of it, you also incorporated it, you and Danny into your own portfolio, you're saying. Yes. Nice. Yep. Awesome. Well, that makes it a lot easier, right? If you're, if you're recommending something that you own the same thing that you're recommending. Yeah, I think that would should almost be a requirement. <laughs> but, yeah, no, uh, no, anyway. no doubt about it. So, um, well, I know you've been selling life insurance for almost 20 years, uh, but you started your practice three years ago. Were you targeting the same type of clientele? Or is your ideal client the same as it was before you started your own practice or is it a little bit different now? Uh, no, I would say a little bit different now. I think there's definitely a place to speak uh, to HR professionals about integrating some of these, you know, tax-free retirement strategies as an offering to an entire workforce. There, there is definitely a need and a place for that. But um, I've been doing more uh, individual consulting, and I would say that the target age frame is from um, age about 35 to 65. And that's where we can have the conversation for those who are preparing to save for retirement in a more tax effective way. How can we do that, right, uh, the, on the younger side? But uh, something that's missing, I would just say from just about everyone's portfolio, you know, you'll, you'll hear when you learn about someone, right, they've got asset diversification. They've got enough going on there as far as diversified assets. The gap is tax diversification. So that's what um, for people who now want to effectively distribute their retirement, that's the gap, right? It's the second half of the game. Um, the other book over my shoulder is by Ed Slot. You guys might be familiar with that one and his uh, practice or talks, but it, it's really about how do you effectively distribute the money you've saved tax deferred. So that's where for the upper age of uh, the age group I shared with you, that's what I'm talking to them about. And then that younger sector, it's how to more effectively save. Nice. Awesome. Well, you, well, you're doing, I mean, we're totally philosophically aligned. Everybody on this podcast mm -hmm. right now is totally philosophically aligned. And um, I, I'm, I'm just curious on the the clientele. Is it coming from some of your previous relationships, like in like talking to HR and talking to some of those employees? Or, or are you uh, finding different ways for your client acquisition initiatives? Um. So I have marketing initiatives. Um, I haven't actually crossed too much over back into that uh, employer world, but um, I, I was also a human resources consultant and HR certified to help people with our companies with federal and state compliance, right? That's, that's just like a, a school of law itself. But uh, with that being said, um, uh, that's where I want to get back to talking to HR about it and bringing that to their employees. But presently, I'm actually doing Facebook marketing. So I'm meeting new people through Facebook um, and just really experiencing that individual sector back to that COVID and things filing out of control. You know, people were getting laid off and one day everything was OK. They had a paycheck. They had a retirement plan. And the next day, you know, that sense of security wasn't there anymore. So I wanted to shift out and touch the individual level a bit mm -hmm. and try to bring control to the individual level outside of an employer. But I think there needs to be an integration mm -hmm. of it all, right? So that you can, that my Facebook marketing is what I do to meet my new clients presently. Gotcha. So um, I was going to say, how did your life change with your practice? But you, if I remember right, you literally started it like right after COVID hit, is that right? Yes. Wow. So, um, so, so the the game plan there then was to, I'm assuming, use Facebook as a way uh, and as a um, uh, a strategy in order to be able to to find these types of clients, and, and that's been what your strategy was from the beginning, and you're still doing that then. Yeah, and, and there's some, you know, for those of us in the industry, organically, right, you know some of your acquaintances may hear about what you're doing and you help some of those who are uh, close to you or within your circle. So there are some of that as well, right? That kind of, as it is that everything got off and running, but um, I really just wanted to get some messaging out there, you know, saying, Hey, just kind of what Tim led into this conversation with not so much of those technical terms, but could there be a better way 
um, you, you know, to, to pay yourself and save for retirement rather than going into this conditioned environment of just putting money into a 401k where we don't know what the heck our taxes are going to be in the future. Yeah. So that's kind of what I led my marketing efforts with. Yeah, for sure. So, so as you're, as you're presenting, let's talk a little bit about, cause we, we talked pre um, show about, you know, your, you were taught and trained, you know, put money in your 401k and everything. And, um, but what we have figured out is, and Ed, Ed Slot, obviously he is, you know, the, the IRA guru, right? Um, but that ticking time bomb of a 401k, how do you help to educate your clients? Or is that like one of the main focuses that you're helping them with, uh, with regards to understanding what that, you know, tax deferral means and what's going to ultimately happen happen to them uh, in, in the long run if they don't do something now. Do you, is that a lot of your strategy with educating your clients along the way? Yes. Yes. I think, I don't think anybody likes taxes, right? So many of us would say, yeah, hey, if there's a, a better way or a way I can pay less taxes or protect my future from taxes, most people want to hear about that. Um, however, how many people want to really do something about that? The concept of a Roth or a backdoor Roth is so trendy right now, but nobody's like raising their hand to just move a bunch of money out and pay a big tax bill. Because even though I think, you know, I believe taxes are currently on sale, mm -hmm. it's still, you know, everyone loves the concept, but no one really wants to take the, the bite of the apple, right? Or give, you know, to, to take those taxes out. So we, I do focus a lot on educating people on the, the current, uh, you know, deficit and inflation and how much money was recently printed and the, the footprint of what may be to come. And as we all know, history repeats itself. You see the trends. We're seeing, you know, potentially another recession coming now, the interest rates, inflation. So we can look at t trends on the tax rate tables as well. So I just try to inspire people to understand what's going on now, not to be an ostrich regarding the situation and realize you could get in control. You can get in control right now. You know, it's not about fight or flight. Uh, just don't don't freeze. Don't freeze up. Right. Let's get a solution. Yeah, that, that's awesome. So um, are you finding that a lot of your clients between 35 to 65, that's the demographic, right? The age, the age range. Mm -hmm. um, are you finding that a lot of them are wanting, if you're finding them on Facebook, are wanting to continue having like a virtual relationship or are some of them wanting to come in and sit down with you and talk in that traditional sense? Um, I would say it's a blend. You know, I, I'm, I work in 12 states presently. And uh, so, you know, obviously for me to be in Georgia tomorrow, I, I could be if needed, but that's not really where the foundation is set. I do think a lot of people are comfortable with the virtual consulting and, and some aren't. Um, but then I also have clients who have become friends and, you know, I'll, I'll go out and, and see them, uh, you know, just to have that opportunity to, to connect. But um, generally my services, I do portray them as being all uh, virtual, of course, with that peace of mind and reassurance, I'll be there with them every step of the way. But uh, yeah, so it's a blend. If they're nice. in California, that's a little easier. Yeah. Well, well no doubt about it. So, um, so you've been kind of sort of virtual. And now, did you already have their licenses in the 12 different states when you started? Or did you just recognize that, hey, I can have more of an opportunity if I get more of these non-resident licenses in some of these other states? Yep. I've just procured them as I've uh, gone along. Yeah. As prior, needed. Yeah. What's that? As needed. Like, oh, my mom lives in, you know, this state. Okay, I'll get my license there. And then you help her out. Because that's kind of how I did it. I, uh, as needed basis, how I did it. Yeah. Well, the companies I worked with before had them all at the corporate level. We could write business anywhere. But I just, uh, with with marketing, right, your footprint can get wider if you have more licenses. So I just kind of realized, okay, we can have a bigger footprint. I could go all 50 states, but uh, just trying to keep it manageable because there is a mm. good good response to it. Awesome. Well, good segment, guys. It's time for a little break. So we'll do that. And when we get back, we're going to let Erica ask me any question she wants about health. We'll be right back. You are 
want the absolute best for yourself, and you want it to be easy. That's why we created Green 85. It helps with detoxifying the body gently. We're proud it's chemical-free, unlike almost all other supplements you'll find. Bottom line, Green 85 will get you healthier. We look forward to hearing what Green 85 did for you. To get this product and our other amazing products, go to chemicalfreebody.com. That's chemicalfreebody.com. What's up, Enrichers? Tim James here. I am back with my co-host, Carter Wilcoxon. Today in the house, we've got Erica Ramos. Erica, um, this is the section of the show where you get to ask me any question on health. So go ahead. What's your question? Well, my first question would be, what what do you mean exactly by chemical free? Even no coffee? Is coffee a chemical? (laughs) Well, technically, everything um, could be considered a chemical even, you know, because there's naturally occurring chemicals, right? Phytochemicals or plant chemicals. It was kind Mm -hmm. of funny because we had a booth up in VegFest right when I first uh, started the company. And this guy went by and he's like, everything's a chemical. You can't have all the chemicals out of your body. And I'm just like, dude, I've, obviously we're talking about man-made chemicals, bro. Mm. <laughs> Jesus, lighten up. I mean, you know, it's just like, man, he's got some problems. So he's got to do some internal work. And yeah. next. So anyway, um, chemical, chemical Free Body was born because what I realized was about nine years ago, I read some umbilical cord studies. And when mm. anybody listening and yourself are done with this podcast go type these three words into your browser umbilical cord chemical umbilical cord chemical and when you look into those you're going to see the studies going back to 2005 every single young mother and child being born where they test the umbilical cord blood they look for 400 toxic chemicals and they find 71 percent of what they're looking for 250 toxic chemicals in the womb researchers and scientists are considering this a body burden 180 of those chemicals cause cancer in humans 212 cause developmental and brain disorders and our children are being born with this. It's ridiculous. I know when I started this work in 2011, there was children being born overweight and obese. That is just weird and bizarre because in nature, you know, you don't see chipmunks or deer or wildebeest born obese. It just doesn't happen. They're freaking healthy. They have certain patterns and movements they do. And um, I'm just like, Whoa. So when I saw these studies, I'm just like, I can't believe it. Like, we're all polluted. Mm. I mean, think about it. if the healthiest of us, the young babies are being born with all these toxic cancer causing chemicals. So I sat back in my chair and I'm like, wow, I we have to have a strategy here because the older we are, the more time we've had to bioaccumulate this toxins from the air we breathe, the water we drink and the food we eat. And, and they're pervasive. I mean, glyphosate, which you see on TV, there's attorney commercials saying, if you've been exposed to glyphosate, the main ingredient roundup, you may be entitled to compensation. Okay, so they're spending mm-hmm. thousands of dollars advertising to find people that have gotten lymphoma cancer so they, those attorneys go make a bunch of dough because there's money set off the side because it's proven that it causes freaking cancer. And we dump billions of pounds. This is one toxin. There's hundreds of thousands. There's over 100,000 of them. It's one. Okay, one toxin. And that one toxin um, causes a lot of problems in the body. Glyphosate is binding to heavy metals and bringing heavy metals into the body through the food we eat and the air. It's in 74% of our rainwater, for God's sakes. Think about that. Three quarters of the planet's water, the rain, has glyphosate in it today, and it keeps going up. Mm -hmm. So it brings in heavy metals in the body, and then if you're around 5G, 4G, smart meters that are 2.4 gigahertz, you're getting zapped because you have all uh, this metal in you, so you become like a conductor. So there's these chemicals are really a problem. So our job, I figure my job here, my mission is to sh- give people awareness. The first thing you have to do is understand there's got to be an awareness there. The problem is, is they're so tiny, you can't see them. Mm-hmm. So, oh, they're out of sight, out of mind, right? But mm-hmm. they're there. They are freaking there. So just imagine every one of your cells has a backpack on and it's got a leaking can of toxins in it and it's dumping out into the back of every cell. Well, all those cells are going to get polluted and they're going to be tired. They're not going to function right. And some of them are like, blah, blah, blah. they can't even talk or communicate. This is where hormones disruption happens. And for women, uh, premenopause, postmenopause, the 28 day cycle, it's all messed up from exposure to chemicals, drinking out of plastic bottles. Um, one of the worst things that I ever see is women getting on birth control, trying to disrupt 
like creation, right? Mm -hmm. I'm almost like buy a condom, you know, um, or abstain, whatever. But, you know, stay away from that stuff because, I mean, I do health histories. I've done over 600. Um, I've done thousands of health histories, but I've personally coached 600 people through this process. So many women have severe issues going on later in life, and they have these all these little backpacks on their cells full of chemicals. So we just teach people, here's the awareness, here's the problems, and here's the solutions, which is like, number one, learn how to stop putting them in. Don't put, you know, shampoo with sodium lauryl sulfate in it. In your on your body because that's a known carcinogen causes cancer. Go check your labels tonight on your shampoo. Sodium lauryl sulfate. It's in most shampoos as a it causes sudsy things, but causes cancer. Um, or if your toothpaste is harmful if swallowed, please contact the poison control center. You might want to rethink putting that sucker in your mouth, right? But we're doing it all day long because it brightens your teeth, and you got to have bright teeth to impress everybody. So. The level of chemicals that we have today is it's pervasive. There's over 100,000 chemicals out there. There's 2,000 new ones every year, and only one quarter of 1% are tested. The rest are released unknowingly to the public, and we are breathing them. We are drinking them. We are eating them, and they're actually even going through our skin. Like So um, if you're wearing clothing that's not 100% naturally organic and you know not sprayed and natural fibers, like synthetics and lycra bras and panties and underwears and even guys wearing like tidy whities that are cotton that are sprayed. Cotton is like, you know, unorganic cotton is the mm -hmm. second highest sprayed crop on the planet behind um, behind sugar cane. So full oh. of chemicals in a very high hormonal area, not good, not good at all. Off gassing twenty four seven, and even after a thousand washes, these clothes are still off gassing ninety seven percent. So polyesters, nylons, lycra microfiber, all this stuff, constantly off-gassing, and you can't see it. You freaking can't see it. So this stuff is bioaccumulating. It's a problem, and that's mm -hmm. why um, we teach people about this and give them strategies because once they learn this and they set up an environment um, for those cells, then the culmination mm -hmm. of their cells getting healthy is they get healthy, their energy comes back, the weight loss, the hormonal communication comes back, and they start feeling better, so they, they just wake up and feel good. Mm. So it can be somewhat reversed uh, oh yeah absolutely and there's many strategies we have products to do it we have saunas um movement and walking getting lots of water into your body making sure your water is purified um getting a clean mattress that's not full of toxins that doesn't have um you know um uh, metal springs in it that are not individually wrapped and insulated that's very oh. important because anybody listening to this podcast if you're sitting on a sleeping on a mattress with with metal coils that are not individually insulated, you are sleeping on a radioactive container base. Not radioactive, but it's a it's a conductor for these EMFs. And people, people, a lot of people don't know that 5G, they're all excited about it because they can download their favorite little clip in 3.2 seconds instead of 9.6 seconds. But 5G is a frequency is right below military grade weaponry. Think about that. And we're getting blasted by it. Isn't it interesting? Every time that there's a new rollout of 3G, 4G, 5G, there's always some type of a, oh, I don't know, pandemic, right? So um, there's just a lot of stuff going on out there. I don't want to go down those rabbit holes, but the bottom line is, is that stuff is not natural. Your body is natural. Your body is nature. The people listening's bodies are nature. And when you get zapped by that stuff, it's it's not good. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's a lot more than just abstaining from coffee. <laughs> yeah. Well, the whole thing with coffee is, I mean, like we talked about it the last episode, I think, or on another yeah, podcast, Dave hot. Asprey made a bunch of dough teaching people that most of the coffee people are eating are moldy. You're, you're drinking mold. So why would you want to do that? We're trying to help people get, you know, mold, yeast, fungus, parasites, mutagens, cancer. We're trying to help them get this stuff, viruses, bacteria out of the body, the bad ones. And um, why would you want to put it in? So it's just the way they grow it and they bring it up here. It's cheap. So if somebody was to do coffee, I always tell them to go to, there's a company called Life Boost. They do at least shade grown. It's more alkalized coffee and it doesn't have mold in it. So that'd be a good first start. But we usually get them on greens, um, our green juice and do this other stuff and then let, let it kind of run its course. And we don't take away coffee from anybody because we know people are addicted to it. It is a drug. And, um, but the problem is, is the way they do it, they actually strip out all the natural cofactors and bioflavonoids that would come with that plant, like L-theanine as an example, that would buffer that coffee. And, you know, it makes you get all wigged out. So that's why if you're going to drink straight coffee, even the Life Boost, I would say add L-theanine to your coffee. 
and drink it that way and it'll it'll do you much better that way but you know it's just one of those things we just go slow and steady kind of alkalize people and get them on water and you know you can make your own lemonade you can make own, your own lemonade i can show you how to make hibiscus tea and turn it into kool-aid just you know it's like there's a lot of things you can do that are really yummy that are healthy for you um that don't cause problems but eh, if you're gonna have some coffee here and there it's not that big of a deal but just make sure it's not make sure it's shade grown and not moldy mm, interesting so how do you test for these chemicals do you actually do a test to see what people currently have in them or well you 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 could but it would be very expensive because you have to test for over a hundred thousand chemicals that blood mm -hmm. test would be a hundred thousand bucks or something so it's not affordable the reality is is that the the if you type in umbilical cord chemical it's common sense is right in front of your face you're mm -hmm. polluted but, yeah. your family is polluted there's no question about it so mm -hmm. Question is, is that now, now knowing this, what are you going to do to move forward? Because everything might be okay now, but next week, next year, next month, 10 years from now, those chemicals, the stress, the lack of nutrition, it all ends up. And then the straw breaks the camel's back. And then one of your family members has a, an event. And then you have to go into Western medicine, which is completely not designed to help you. It's, it was born out of wartime. It's it's crisis care management. You get shot, you get shrapnel, you get a leg blown off, they'll patch you up and save your life. You get in a car accident, they're fantastic, wonderful. We need them for that. But as far as chronic disease, even knowing about this kind of stuff, I mean, they're completely clueless. And all we have to do is look around. The quality of our health is in the toilet. And uh, we are actually the sickest human beings have ever been in the history of our of humanity. The sickest. So why would we keep going down the same route? It's kind of like going to a, a, a financial advisor that keeps putting you in like mutual funds, you know, and they're charging you like 4% and, you know, and that you're just riding the roller coaster and the mutual fund manager by prospectus is handcuffed and they can't pull out when they see the storm coming ahead, just go into the storm and, ah, and your money's in cut in half, right? So we mm -hmm. have to just be smart and intelligent adults and say, hey, look, the system's broken, like, it's broken. We have to take responsibility for our own health. We have to become our own doctor. We have to learn how to self-heal. And if you don't know how to do that, find somebody like myself that has already been through that gamut and learn. Because, you know, 12 years ago, I didn't know any of this stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was 42 pounds overweight, bleeding rectally. I had eczema on both my elbows, bleeding. And my I couldn't even wear white shirts as a financial advisor anymore because it would stain and look terrible. My, my world was imploding. And now here I am, 49 years old. I've got abundant energy. People think I'm on cocaine. Nope. This is how people are supposed to be. People are supposed to wake up. And it's like 5 o'clock Pacific Standard Time right now. I'm ready to rock and roll. And then about 10 o'clock tonight, I'll, I'll come down. I dim the lights. I have a routine because your nighttime routine starts your day. Get my melatonin going. And then, you know, I, I could try to get a good night's sleep. And I wake up and then go out and kick butt again. But it wasn't like that for quite a few years. I was dragging my ass through the day with coffee and stimulating on stuff and eating donuts and stuff. And I just, I didn't know any better. Nobody told me what all the crap that was in the foods today. Mm -hmm. Interesting. What about um, like c CT scans or scans where they, you know, inject stuff into you so they can take a better look at things um, or, you know, X-rays, how harmful are those to us? Well, what is, does the X-ray technician stay in the room and hold your hand and sing Kumbaya when you're getting zapped? <laughs> Not generally. They get the hell out of there and they put a bunch of lead on you. Yeah, so totally. tell you that. They're out the door. CAT scans. You know, here's the thing. The diagnostic equipment that Western Medicine has is pretty freaking awesome. The downside of some of it, like CAT scans, is it gives you cancer, Right. Um, it, it, it really frustrates me when I see like, even in my hometown here, it's like, have you got your mammogram? It's just like, oh my God. I mean, mammograms cause cancer. Like, and if you have something going on in there, they're going to smash the tissue and spread it. Right. So you would want to do something called thermography. So now that I've opened that can of worms, women, you just go do your homework. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thermography. Actually, you know what? I need to get somebody on my show about that and just go into detail on that because it's driving me nuts. Like they're, they're pushing these mammograms all the time. Early detection. It's just like they just want to get you into their system earlier so they can treat you more because there's more money in it. That's what it is. Prevention is the key, which I think is going to come into your next question because you, you mentioned um, 
Uh, you were talking about genetics. Didn't you have a question about genetics? Uh, yeah, genetic testing, which I have heard about that. You know, maybe there's different types of breast cancer even that are genetic linked. Um, but I more recently had been exposed to um, the thought of maybe, you know, your your the vitamins you're taking aren't doing good for you. Maybe that you're, you have different things going on in your DNA that could be better served by not having this supplement, et cetera. So anyhow, just some insight on uh, genetic testing, I think would be. Yeah. Good. When I first started this work, I kind of got into that a little bit. And then I realized that nobody really, most people just, it's over their head and they don't care. Okay. You have to talk to people at a fifth grade level for them to get to understand it. I don't know if you guys experience this, but if you have medical doctors that come in as a potential client, and if you use words over their head, they say no to you. So you have to communicate to them in their terms. Otherwise, they feel embarrassed that they don't know and they leave. So it's the same thing with everybody else. I try to boil things down to make it simple. So here's my take on the whole genetics thing. This genetic testing that they're doing, some of it's freaking awesome, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's fantastic. Again, the diagnostic equipment's great. However, I spend most of my time on epigenetics, which is creating the environment or terrain for the genes to express themselves in a healthy way. And anybody can look this up. It's like Dr. Bruce Lipton did this work. He was a 50 year uh, uh, cell biologist. Like he was researching mm -hmm. cells under a microscope and he was kind of a cool dude. And, he, and I actually met him in person, most lovable guy. I'm, I, he's just awesome. So he's looking at these and the whole theory was that the nucleus was the powerhouse of the cell. It was the driver of the cell. And he thought, well, I'm gonna take the nucleus out and see what happens. So he took it out and the cell lived. Well, kind of dispel that theory. Um, mm -hmm. Just remember, people used to think the earth was flat. I mean, I know there's some people out there that still think it is, but it's round, okay? You know, and then the person who, you know, Galileo or whatever, is like, hey, it's round. And they're like throwing stones at him, right? So you're going to get ridiculed at first when, when you first are looking at this stuff. So then what Dr. Lipton realized was is that the cells have receptors on them, and then the, there was frequency coming from somewhere else, and overnight he became very spiritual. So... It's epigenetic. So the way I look at it is like um, like some of this even gene research like or cancer research, what are they doing? They take a Petri dish. They put a known carcinogen in the dish. They take healthy human tissue or cell. They put it in the carcinogen, which they know is going to create cancer. And then they study that process. And then they try to tra create some synthetic uh, drug to block that process from happening so they can patent it and sell it to you for 5,000, 50,000% profit margins. Could you imagine having a 5,000% profit margin in your business, Carter? <laughs> well, most businesses, I mean, grocery stores operate on one, two, three percent I mean, most businesses, if you're at 10, 12%, you're rocking 15% smoking, right? People are like, oh, you're on the business. Like, well, yeah, but it's like I work all the time. And, you know, it's like whatever. So you have, they want to sell you this stuff. My whole thought process is, hey, how about we don't take your healthy cells and put them in the carcinogenic environment in the first place? Why don't we do this? Why don't we purify the air in your house? You're taking 20,000 breaths a day. It's the number one nutrient because without it, you die in four to seven minutes. So air is kind of important. Oxygen is a big deal. So start cracking your windows at night. Get air purification systems in your home, especially in your bedroom and your children's bedrooms. Um, what's the quality of your water? If your water is not triple purified for drinking water, it's, you know, it's, it's going to be, it's going to have stuff in it. I mean, filtered water is not, it's just, it's okay. It's better than nothing, but you need triple purified water for your drinking water. Um, and then you start looking at your food. How fresh is your food? Are you growing your own food? Most people don't even know, but you can grow sprouts at home for pennies. You can buy this stuff in huge bulk and um, like lentils can, and mung beans and fenugreek can be sprouted and thrown in salads in two and a half days, ready to rock and roll. Ready, ready to go. And now you're having hundreds of thousands of these phytochemicals or plant nutrients coming in to reverse and prevent disease. And it's living food. Go to local farmer's markets. Get to know your farmer. Buy fresh fruits. Buy sprouts. Fresh, fresh, fresh. Get herbs. Get an herb garden growing. Grow your own vegetables at home. Do all that stuff, right? And then, and then it's, you know, so you've got air, water, food. And then you start looking at movement, getting outside, getting in nature, and sunshine, and da, 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 uh, down the road it goes. So... As far as the genetics things goes, there's a lot of stuff there that can help people. The diagnostic equipment's amazing. But my mm -hmm. theory is, is like, okay, let's just be smart about this and let's create a great environment for our cells to breathe, drink, 
eat, sleep on, the clothes we wear. And if we do that, you're going to feel freaking amazing and your body's going to come back. It's all about the environment. It's the terrain. Very good. Yeah. Very yeah. insightful. Learned a lot. Definitely. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. A lot of stuff there, huh, Erica? Oh, yeah. Well, and he's only scratching the surface of, uh, of uh, the, the knowledge that he has on all this stuff. So um, go ahead, Tim. All right. Well, you guys are speechless. All right. We did it. Yeah. All right. No. <laughs> no, but the whole point is, is that it's awareness right now with awareness. Now you're equipped to go do something with that. Right. And that's the whole point. So if this little segment today, if nobody listens to this, Eric, Erica, and you go home and you benefit and mm -hmm. your little daughter benefits and maybe she's the only one that listens, it was worth our time. It was totally mm -hmm. worth our time because that's going to be a whole different fork in the road. And hopefully, um, I mean, you look like a pretty healthy fit lady. So, I mean, hopefully this will be um, uh, just a moment in time that we're, you'll prioritize health a little bit more in your life and realize that well, there's, you know, there's, there's more that I can do. There's, in fact, there's, there's a lot I can do. I don't want to be overwhelmed by it, but I can start taking baby steps and I can start mm -hmm. heading this way so I can have more energy to grow my business and, and by the way, like people that work on their health, like Carter and I have talked about this before. I went back and did a survey. The business owners, the people that were um, uh, on commission sales in six months increased their business by 21% by working with us and improving their health. And we mm -hmm. didn't talk a stitch about money. So your body is the vehicle that's driving your business. And if you, we can get your cells cleaned up vibrating at a higher frequency and the culmination of them is you're going to vibrate at a higher frequency you're going to have more energy your brain's going to work better and you're going to become more attractive in the marketplace because there's just going to be something special about eric i don't know what it is but i like her better than other the other gal honey let's go with her and that's what happens so mm -hmm. anyway we appreciate you coming on today and yeah, um, thank you for having me guys take us home carter yeah absolutely hey and richards thank you so much for joining us for another episode of the health and wealth podcast and to be able to see all of our other previous guests, like this amazing Erica Ramos of uh, Stream Strategies, you can go to our website at www.thehealthandwealthpodcastshow.com and make sure to like, share, and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts, Apple, Spotify, Google. Um, so I want to go ahead and, and thank Erica Ramos today for coming on and sharing her backstory, her journey to be able to help advisors. And in the show notes, we'll make sure that we have the website. Obviously, I talked about your website earlier. They can find you at streamtaxfree.com uh, and be able to get in contact with you. But we'll make sure we have all those in the show notes. Erica, thank you so much for uh, for joining us today. It was it was a great pleasure on having you on the show today. Well, thank you for having me. It was wonderful to have a conversation with you guys. And thank you for the the insight, Tim. I think definitely left us or left me with some things to think about. If, Carter's heard about it before, obviously. <laughs> yeah, and if you want to follow up on any of that, I do have a podcast. It's everything's linked on our, our um, on my website at chemicalfreebody.com. Awesome, wonderful. Yeah. Well, pleasure to to meet you guys and be here with you today. Absolutely, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So, for yeah, my fantastic uh, Chemical Free Body co-host, Mr. Tim James, I am Carter Wilcox and CEO and founder of CSI Financial Group. Wishing you all a very wonderful and abundant day. And until next time, Enrichers, we will see you on the Health and Wealth Podcast. Thank you, everybody. Hey, Enrichers. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Health and Wealth Podcast. I'm your host, Carter Wilcoxon. And I'm your host, Tim James. And by God, we are committed to helping you guys have fat wallets, flat bellies. So tune in again for another episode and make sure to like, share, and drink a lot of water. Or beer. You have just listened to the Health and Wealth Podcast with Carter and Tim.